So, start with the true story. Then we'll do the spin. The A1 was originally a Roman road, but now it seemed to be a symbol of our life, snaking up the spine of the UK, connecting north to south. This road is the essence of our country and our minds. At one time, everything seemed to be so A1. We started going to this trendy new club in Chelsea. We were all filled with dreams of conquering London. But that night in June, London began to conquer us. God, Matt, the way you drive that car is lethal. Well, don't be so hard on him, Seb. Hard, oh, Jules, I'm being soft on that. Just the other day, I was in his car steaming up the King's Road like it's an autobahn. I have visions of four lawsuits and the jail term. Darling, you're just jealous because Matt drives a flash car and you don't. Oh yeah, so long as he doesn't drive you, Nicole, it wear out all your parts. Seb, what planet are you from? Matt's long worn out Nicky's clutch. And you were in the closet filming every minute. Did he tell you, sweetie, who's in the closet? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Jules and I had all been best mates at public school. Nicole, she'd arrived on the scene at university. We had come to see Greg, a social climbing club promoter, and set ourselves up for a serious session at his flash new place. Oh, here come the pumpkin white boys. You guys make it go, eh? Hands down. So I rocketed. Hey, fuck talking about the markets. What's inside worth shagging? Can't you see the shit going on? That's lovely, lovely. Of course, the snapper from Tatler was there for Nicole, one of the current London it girls. Dazzling, but manipulative. Nikki was dead of her year, but Jules, he couldn't stand her. Maybe that's because she was Matt's girlfriend. Or had been. Matt took his revenge by trying to nail down any bit of totty who would swallow his spin. I took advantage of my temporary freedom to get close to Nicole, which made me feel a little guilty, because I'd left my girlfriend, Cass, behind. Jules, of course, just laughed at all of our games. Nikki and I hit the floor. The club was full on. Greg and his crew were doing landslide business, getting all the punters nicely fucked. That night, Matt's spin was in overdrive. I was entertaining Nikki as innocently as I could. Then, I saw Jules and Greg having a go at one another. Jules, it's time we had a chat. Where's that 300 quid? I'm over that now. Right, that's it. I'm getting the bounces. Jules had always been living on tick, but I thought that he kicked it. Matt had found this bird from the suburbs, talking to Greg's girl Flick at the VIP How bar. you doing? I'm Matt Hobart Cecil. You know that, of course. What are you drinking? Why didn't you find out? Ramen, making a boffin. Do come here often. I come here from time to time. The problem with Matt is that he wanted to be a porn star. Investment banking was just too slow. I mean, just look who he's chatting up now. I mean, the girl's just not one of us. Look at her shoes. They're all wrong. Looking at Nicole's reaction, did I detect a flicker of jealousy? Oh. So, do something about it. Punish him. The one who'd been changing the most was Jules. Ever since he'd got into that trendy South London art scene, he was quite the wrong man on the pitch. He'd taken some book job 
with an outfit off the new Tate. And now was quite the tiring publisher. As the night wore on, the DJs took the crowd ever higher. Matt made quite the display with this bird. It didn't work though. Nikki just ignored Matt. Instead it was Sarah who got her attention. It smells too good to me. Sarah was some Lord's daughter who had quite a taste for Nikki. Predictably, she and Nikki made a show of it. And predictably, Matt reacted. I was quite enjoying Matt's discomfort, especially when he downed his third bottle of Bollinger with this new chick quite oblivious to the whole charade. They danced right in his face. So he took it to the next level and flaunted the girl on the dance floor. Oh, I hope he's got a condom. God knows he'll need a crate with that worn out dolly bird. As we watched him go, Nicole was her usual acerbic self. Of course, I wasn't really worried at all about Matt. I'd seen him go off and shag a hundred girls. The DJ brought the last set to its orgasmic conclusion. As usual, we went through the right of all these shallow clubs at 3am, hugging those we knew, those we didn't know, those we hated. The girls were going at it like two lost soulmates on the whole trip back to Kensington. Darlings, I did promise Cassandra I'd be home tonight. <laughs> well, I'll just have to give her a call then and tell her you're in no condition to drive home. Yeah, but I know what she'll say. She'll say take a taxi. <laughs> and then I'll say you're absolutely skint. Greg and his club took everybody. <laughs> 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 they really had me quite heated. Let your shackles vibrate Let the force move up your spine Ignite your senses and your body elevate. I was filled with expectation I want to have a soul sense oh, with a shock With you Yeah Um PlayStation's under the TV. And the porn's on channel 5. Amuse yourself, darling. Good night. Night. See you in the morning. I wanna get there with you. But I, I wanted some real flesh. Some real blood. So what I'm saying. They were just about to lure me in when I flashed on Cassandra. Kaz had been off clubs for a while and was at my flat, waiting. So I upped and left. I don't know what stopped me, but maybe I was falling in love, or maybe the sex with Kaz was just too good. Of course, Matt survived his tete-a-tete -tete with that girl midweek. We met at Lunasa to plan Greg's birthday party the next night, but the talk always turned to something other than the important things, like someone else's logistics. Okay, mate. Cheers, mate. Good health. Mm. Well, you know what? I just saw this guy get out of a Jaguar, and he's about our age, and he's so dishevelled. How the hell can he afford one? My boss would call it a shagua. I know what you mean though, it's fucking irritating. It's got to be trust fund, drug dealing or gun running. Thing is though, it's not my scene. It'd be the Ferrari for me. The porn star machine. <sighs> Mate, a nice chrome F355. I can see it now, driving down the King's Road. Beautiful blonde sitting beside me. Hands everywhere, top off. What? In broad daylight? No man, the top of the car. One track mine, that's your problem. Nice one, cheers. Cheers. What's it gonna be? Midweek fuck up or a chilled one? I reckon it's gonna be a load of chilled ones for a midweek fuck up. Sorted. Finish that. I'll get two more in. 
Okay. Nice. You get two sharpness things. It's halfway to the weekend. Excellent, mate. Lick it. Matt could ruminate like he was half Disraeli, half Keith Richards. Meanwhile, the girls were planning something different. Demands to see me. The poor fool didn't understand that I only flirted with him to make the sale. Anyway, he puts down this enormous bunch of yellow roses on my desk, and now the whole office thinks I'm shagging him. Oh God, darling, looks like I'm going to have to deprogram you of any thoughts of men. You can't. I've just thought this dress is going to make Matt insanely jealous. <gasps> Fabulous! I can't wait to see Matt green with envy. Oh. As I was getting yet another round of shots, I could tell that Matt was troubled. Go, oh, nice one. Cheers. Good health. Fuck me. Did you catch the game the other night? Fucking England threw it away. Yeah, well, they lack ambition. We don't. We can live to fulfil it. You will. I won't. You've got Cass. Mate, wish I could find some fit chick to return to every day. Mate, I can't settle on one. There's just too much poo nanny out there. Anyway, got to go and shake the weasel. More philosophy when I return. He couldn't fool me. He was still mad for Nicole. All the other birds would have to wait. Naturally, it turned into a serious bender that led to a shocking hangover. God knows how Matt must have felt at the office. Anyway, Matt rang to try and get himself some more drugs for that night. I blew a chance to stop the whole thing then. So, don't beat yourself up, Matt. It isn't attractive. I mean, you can hardly blame yourself for not being able to focus on that report. Seb called in sick today. He told his executive producer he wasn't coming in till Monday. Yeah, but he needs me more than I need him, Cass. I see a little pick-me-up, you know. I think you should pace yourself, Matt. Yeah. Matt, sorry to interrupt your conversation, but I need that 50-page accounting report on my desk by Monday. Six month, one year, five year cash flow projections in all categories. And this time, Matt, Push the fucking bullshit caution right to the edge of the law. Otherwise, you want this IPO to fly? You got that right, bud. This IPO's gotta fly like the eagle. Or it's your ass. Got it? Yeah, I got it, Sam. No fuck ups. Fucking wanker. No, 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 Cass, not you. Matt's like, uh, yank got boss had been on at him for his fuck ups. But Matt didn't care. More coke would see him right through any project. Work like slaves, party like porn stars, he always said. And he thought a slowing down just wouldn't do. Our way of keeping up was through chemicals. Jules's current way was with the gym, but then he always had a different perspective. No, 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 Jules, stop. Don't straighten your arms at the end of the repetition. Look, I've told you before, the arms, they have to be slightly bent all the way through the exercise. Okay, well, that's it for today's session. Go stretch off. I'll see you next Wednesday, yeah? Remember, no smoking. You're such a Nazi. Jules desperately wanted to come to Greg's party to work out his debt. Seb, Jules. And I had to set it up. Oh, you've been absolutely brilliant. Thanks for getting me in. God, I know things have been a bit rough between Greg and me lately. I'm glad you acted like an ambassador. Well, then it's sorted. Well, I'll bring a present. We'll all act like nothing happened. <laughs> see you at eight then, mate. While I was stupidly trying to patch things up between Greg and Jules, I couldn't see what was really brewing with everyone else. He called, you know, whilst you were in the shower. Who did? Matt. He said he's coming around here half an hour early. He wants to steal himself for Greg's party. Oh, God, that means he's coming over the box. Better break it up now before he comes over and hoovers it all up. Rack up a line, I'll open the champagne. Cass wasn't much into powder. She just did it to please me. What really happened between Greg and Jules? Nothing. Nothing at all. It was a drug bill. When Jules went clean, he stiffed him with all the money that he owed. Now Greg wants cash only. And Matt's afraid Greg will cut him off all his credit. Greg, Cassie, everything is an account and everything has to be balanced. Maybe it's for the best that Greg does cut him off. 
I mean, Matt's clubbing is going a bit bonkers. His drug taking's relentless, and we're all here egging him on. He can handle it. Top up, serum. Nicole. Oh, yes, please. Slow down, darling. Any more, and you won't be able to perform tonight. So you take care of that, won't you, babe? For a fee. Jules. Pass. Jules is on a health care. Then Jules will definitely be performing tonight. Yeah, but only for a fee. And I bet you Jules' fee is bigger than Greg's. <laughs> <laughs> As always, we arrive fashionably late. See, Cass, I'm more than ready to handle the rigours of another night. And you do know why. It's because you finish off the rest of my stash, you ass. And you love it. <laughs> You're always to blame. <laughs> Matt was a magnet for games. I didn't know we had gained him so far. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Greg. Happy birthday to you. And many more. And many more for all of us. Guys, thanks for the wicked presents, even to you, Jules. I mean, this tie is so wonderfully wrong. Aww. Who will ever wear that? I know who. Colonel Hobart. He likes yeah. things gorgeous. Colonel Hobart. <laughs> He's no more a colonel than my dad's a duke. He's as rich as a duke. Well, nearly. Anyway, he's invited Sevnikon and I up for a fat party at his estate in Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. And I need a housewarming present. Unless Jules intends to come and hand it to the colonel in person. I'm sure Colonel Hobart will be just thrilled with this tie. <laughs> but I don't think he'd be content with just well, that. That's why we need some help from the birthday boy, I think. But I wasn't invited. Yeah, well, if you come up on Sunday, you can come up and handle the refills. Besides, you could do with the business, I think. <laughs> business? That's a joke. My business should have been to stop it all then. But I didn't. And is there a theme to this party? Well, Jules, it's the opposite of you, and now the opposite of you means that you have to be the opposite to what you think you are. And I think Jules knows who the opposite of him is. Oh, <laughs> Matt, below the belt. Where Jules has his mind all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your opposite, Matt? Come on, out with it. That's just it, dear boy. I'm not out. Well, hang on. Jules isn't out either, are you? Uh, he's only halfway out, I think. <laughs> oh, come on, Matt. Do give him an answer. The opposite of you. The real you. It'll take some thinking. Yeah. OK. How about 50? Fat, bald... <laughs> and dead. <laughs> mm, I think it's probably about time we got the birthday boy to break it out. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Like children in a sandpit. We just had to have it all. I'm so tired of the shade. Pink is so passe. Yeah, try my new gloss. It's called Cherry Red. Mm. I think they should call it Vampire Red. Well, I tell you, that's a lot more pots. With your face, darling, they'd sell anything to anybody. With the girls away from the table, Matt seized his chance mm. with relish. Nice. <laughs> I thought I'd catch you hoovering Greg's VIP stash. I didn't think I'd catch you hoovering each other. Wanna watch, Matt? I think I'd be jealous. Which one of us do you want, then? Me or Sarah? Oh, well, I'm gonna have to get a lot higher before I start hearing any confessions. It's not Sarah I'd be jealous of. Oh, come on. She's fresh pie and I'm not. But it's your pie I need. <laughs> come with me up to the Colonel's. Or just you and me. And Seb. The old times. The old times. Matt should have known. There's no going back to the old times. Stick a cork in it. Well, come on. We'll have a giggle. OK. On one condition. No champagne before three and no blue before seven. I've got to start drying you out. That was an impossibility. Now that I reckon that you know. Oh, 
It looks like we've had a reconciliation. Yeah, let's give them a hand. Well done. Well done. Well done. We well, shouldn't our golden couple be occupied in the honeymoon suite. I mean, Greg's maid has put on extra sheets of stuff. Thanks, mm. but I think I'd rather have you. Mm. I'm off. Does this mean you're not coming with us up to the colonels? No. Ah, it's yours. After the party, Cass had had enough. I'd agreed to take Greg's stash up to Colonel Hobart's. And that had pushed her to the limit. The girls have got some sexy slinking out. Oh yeah, no, that's right. I've got their jacket for them as well. Yeah, I've got a shocking hangover, mate. What time are they getting here? Oh, look, here they are. Nicole and Sarah met Matt and I outside Pimlico Station. Nice to see you. He was obviously ecstatic to have a crack at Nicole again. Everyone was so eager to get to Colonel Hobart that we jumped, laden with drugs and alcohol, into the car and headed through London to the A1. Weaving our way through the streets, oh, I could see that Matt and Nicole were about to start arguing. Hey darling, use the champagne. Sarah unlocked the tension by opening the champagne. Sarah, give me one. Oh, well, look, just have a bit of Nicole's, okay? I know, but you've got to know now, he's fine, okay? Look, honestly, he's done this before. He and I used to do this for you first. You don't even remember, Nicole. We've got a six hour drive. Okay, fair enough. And one more for you. Okay, well, yeah, we should be sharing. Anyway, hang on. Hang on, isn't this a party we're going to? Should we be partying, partying, partying? Come on. Our cries to party just awoke the beast inside of Matt. And of me, too. But then, I wasn't driving. Okay, mate, come on, I need my pills. Matt, you need to drive faster. Halfway up the A1, Matt started to get edgier and edgier. Nicky, give me a jolt. You promised. God's sake. Sarah, give me a massage, will you? I think my optic nerves have played out. Darling, I don't think I'm going to be able to reach your optic nerves. Massage. Your speciality. Go ahead. I want a massage too. So, so do I as well. But why don't you massage his other head? But instead of stopping him, I just indulged him. Really need the car. Oh, Matt, you promise, please. Why don't you let me drive? No one drives my car except me. Is that good enough? Or is nothing ever good enough? Matt, Matt, here are the pills, okay? Right? Here, just chill out, relax. <laughs> That was a fatal mistake. Jules came over to calm my guilt and my fear. No, Jules, don't stop. Fill the bloody glass all the way. I want to drift into memories. You remember how tight we were? You, me, Matt? We were the three musketeers in our fifth form year. Don't be so sentimental. You haven't got the luxury. You've got to get your story straight. I know. I've told everything to the police. So, you're going to be telling it over and over again. More police, more insurance investigators. I know, and God, more lawyers. So, start with the true story. Then we do the spin. Okay. Well, when I came to it, it was obvious Matt was dead. He had the gear stick, it was coming all the way through his back. What about Nicole? Well, I dragged her from the car and pulled her onto the grass. Is that where her neck snapped? When you dragged her out? Jules, I don't know. How can anyone know? But Sarah, she thinks I'm paranoid. Did she say that to the police? Of course she didn't. Did you? Well, I heard something snap. It came from the sound. It came from her neck. Maybe I dreamt it. Maybe I imagined it. I just don't know. Oh, nightmare. You're damn right it's a nightmare. Sarah, she's going to blame me for the rest of my life. Cass, she's not even sticking by me on this. Jules, what am I supposed to do? It's all right. We'll get through this together. We? Yes, of course we. 
Isn't it about time? What the fuck was all this about, Jules? Don't you know? I've been in love with you for years. I, I thought that was mad. And you've been in love with me too. You just haven't had the guts to admit it. Admit what? I'll admit it. I can see it in your eyes. You just fuck off. You know, just get out. Just leave me, all right? You're damn right it's over. I was blind to everything. Why couldn't I see it about Matt? It was only about when, not if. I couldn't see it about Cassandra. And why the fuck couldn't I see it about Jules? My whole life was a lie. A few days later, I wandered down to the tent. I walked to the spot where Matt and I used to hang out when we were young. The image of Nikki just lying there in a coma turned over and over in my mind. I had managed to bribe the cremation guys to give me some of Matt's ashes. I mixed them up with the last of my coke and my pills. I shook the combination hard and chucked the mix into the water. It was the least I could do for Matt. Maybe his ashes would have a good high. I hoped they would have a damn good high. I swore I would never have another one myself. Question was, how good was my vow? Would it be any better than Matt's? Left to do before, just take.